All right, welcome again to Dallas Job Seekers Club. Um, today we are featuring um, our career coach, Christine Horseman, who we've been partnering with this year. Um, and today we're going to be focusing on LinkedIn and how to build a better profile. So go ahead and um, if you have any questions throughout the chat, throughout the presentation, um, drop them in the chat. We'll take care of them here at the end. Um, so keep uh, yourselves muted during the presentation so that it, um, so we don't get any feedback or anything like that. With all of that housekeeping out of the way, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Christine. Hi, welcome everybody. I see a few familiar names and some new folks and we're glad to have all of you here with us. Again, I'm Christine Horstman. I'm a certified professional coach, a certified career coach and a professional development instructor. So we're talking about LinkedIn, and I know this is part of um, our Job Seekers Club, but what I want to reiterate is how important LinkedIn is once you find the next job. So to encourage you to stay active on LinkedIn, people often think about their network and networking tools when they need a job, and it's such an important part of your career development. Um, I know there's been a lot of other topics for the group, but of those that I've been involved in, we've talked about job search strategy, we've talked about resumes, career changes, networking, even interviewing, and LinkedIn is tied to all of these. It's pretty obvious for most of it, but one of the things that I know I've mentioned in other sessions is that a lot of my clients, when they are doing uh, online, uh, video or phone interviews, the folks are looking at their LinkedIn profiles, not necessarily their resumes. So it's really critical that all the detail that it is on your resume is also on your LinkedIn profile. And then I also wanted to share with you all this career development uh, model. And it starts with knowing yourself, exploring your options, getting focused and taking action. And of course, that's everything we're doing in this group. But again, I want you to understand how much it ties into LinkedIn in general, beyond the job search, into your ongoing career development. One of the things that I say all the time is that companies own jobs and you own your career. So it's so important for you to continue to put out the brand story, if you will, about who you are as a professional, what you represent, what your capabilities are, and what you continue to look for in the future. So the knowing yourself part on LinkedIn, uh, showcasing your strengths, your talents, your skills, there's actually you know the whole skill section that we're gonna go over, even exploring your options. It's in a really great place to stay current on industry trends, who are the industry influencers, um, to research clients, to research ongoing events and happenings, um, what kinds of things you need to be up to speed for, for your given industry or the industry you wish to be a part of. And of course, taking action is so important for LinkedIn. We can actually gain experience in LinkedIn, we can network, we can find clients, we can find people when we're in the position to hire, and of course we can get hired and stay connected with organizations where you share common interests and goals. Okay, so LinkedIn, I love this quote. Um, LinkedIn is no longer an online resume, it's your digital reputation. So this is such an important part. Almost all hiring managers are gonna vet you on social media to some degree, especially the further along you are in the hiring process. So LinkedIn is one of those places they're gonna go and quite frankly, they're gonna expect you to be there. Um, anywhere from 64 to 85% of people report getting hired through a referral, which is one of the reasons why LinkedIn is so important when it comes to career changes and job searching. Um, either whatever the statistic is um, most currently or that you're hearing depending on the source, the point is it's really high. And in times like these where many people are applying to the same job and everybody has to go through those automated tracking systems, it's even more important to try and find 
a way in the door through a real life human being that you've got a connection with. And that's where LinkedIn can be so helpful with those first, second and third degree connections that show up in your profile to where you realize it might be a third degree connection, but you have a way to get there through the, whoever is closest within that you know, stepping stone between you guys. The other thing is if you're a college graduate and you have your education on your LinkedIn profile, when you go to look at a job opening on LinkedIn um, in the job boards on LinkedIn, you will see if there are fellow alumni who work there. So it might be that you don't know this person, they might be younger, older, um, just never crossed paths before, but it's still a little bit of a warm opening to reach out and say, hey, you know, fellow Boston College alumni, fellow Eagle, um, I noticed you work for so-and-so. I'm very interested in learning more about um, that company. Could we possibly connect? And most of the time people are gonna say yes. Okay, so let's get down to brass tacks here. Your LinkedIn profile, the basics of the LinkedIn profile. Your headshot is you have to have one. <laughs> I'm gonna show you an example of a profile without a photo and you'll see how it falls flat compared to the others. And you need one where it's not like some weird, you've cropped your dogs out and it's just a part of your head. You need a nice headshot, just a plain wall, anywhere you can do it with natural light, with iPhones these days, you can get um, a really decent headshot done with no effort, no cost. The banner that shows up behind, we'll look at examples as well. This is something that gives you the opportunity to stand out when people are scrolling and seeing various profiles. It's kind of your personal billboard. So if you have been um, featured in a panel on stage at a speaking engagement, um, you present workshops, put a picture of you doing that. If there are several prominent brands you've worked with, you might kind of do some sort of collage with their logos. There's lots of different ways you can use this to try and stand out. Canva is a free online tool where you can create things like this, where you could um, create this banner. They already have all the dimensions set. And again, that's Canva. PicMonkey is another one. Um, that can allow you to do a lot of this. It's also a great one that is free where you can edit that headshot that you take. With your name, if you are married or divorced, you wanna use the former name function so that people can find you. An old colleague might've thought of you and you haven't worked together in 10 years, but they thought of you for an opening or they're looking to connect with you. Um, and you may be able to be a help or support to them. So make sure um, if your name has changed, that people can find you. Okay, optimizing your LinkedIn profile. So uh, I put tagline here. Really now we always call it headline. We used to say tagline sometimes. I need to update that, sorry about that. But what I wanted to just remind you of is even you know professionally, we're all on our phones so often. So 40% of users are looking at LinkedIn on their phones. Um, so those first 73 characters of your headline, the first 43 of your profile summary or what people are going to see on their phone. The other reminder uh, about the headshot, your profile picture, is that they don't enlarge. It's not like on some of the other social media platforms so, and they're not clickable. So you want it to be a nice photo where you're, it's easy to see your face. So 60% of the face is recommended to be showing in that headshot that you're gonna use for your profile picture on LinkedIn. Okay, so let's talk about the headline. You have 120 characters to use for um, your space for what you can do on your headline. 73 of which of those are gonna show up on the cell phone. So again, we want to not bury the lead, right? As they say in journalism, we wanna put the really good stuff first, make it eye-catching. Um, the default is going to be whatever your current job title and employer is. And even if you get a new job, I'm gonna show you what I would prefer your headline to look like so that 
you're always sort of in this position of creating your own personal brands and getting found by people, not just locked into you're now an advertisement for someone else's business and your current employer. Not that you're not going to be a team player and support them in what you do on LinkedIn, but to where you're still always showcasing yourself first and foremost. Again, you want to be descriptive, but succinct. Um, you know, we've talked about this when we talk about things like on our resume, it's the same kind of thought. You get a little more to work with, um, but think in keywords, think in value statement, think about your elevator pitch, if you will. If you have your own consulting, your own business, or once you get hired, you can sell. You can think of this also as a potential to have, have a call to action. Be creative, be yourself. One of the pieces of advice that I know I shared when we talked about refreshing our resume is to try to use your natural voice. One of the reasons why people find it so hard to write their resume, besides the fact that we have to be succinct, besides the fact that sometimes we feel uncomfortable like we're showing off or bragging about ourselves, um, is that we get into this resume language kind of mode of what you think you're supposed to sound like. So I wanna encourage you, especially on LinkedIn, you can be a little less formal than on your resume. So be creative and be yourself. This is a chance to have a little bit more of your personality to come through so that it echoes your resume, but gives them extra, gives them a stronger feel for who you are and more information about who you are. This is one of my clients, um, Susanna. Now she has been in the same profession in the same business for 20 years. She has um, an investment in this company. Um, she's a part owner, so she's not going anywhere. So you can see hers is a good example of selling. It's really explicit exactly what she does in her summary. Um, and what I will tell you is um, Susanna is a great example of the skills section. Um, when I had her update her skills section, which does not take very long at all, for the first time ever, the very next day, within 24 hours, she got her first organic sales lead on LinkedIn where somebody finally found her. So small, small tweaks on LinkedIn can be really powerful. Okay, here's some other examples of LinkedIn headlines and profile shots. You see where it's a very direct head on shot, you're smiling, you're open, you look like you're willing to connect uh, with people. And you can see some various ways that people have done this. Um, the top uh, left of the screen where you've got the orange background, this is an awesome example of a banner that catches your eye. And in fact, this woman was one of the first people to use an emoji in her name, but she does it in a clever way, ties the whole color scheme into her whole branding. Um, <clears throat> you'll see up at the top under Paul Thompson, helping financial advisors attract more clients using online marketing. So this tells you what he does, not what company he works for. This is example of using an elevator pitch style headline, um, as is Laura's with recruiting the very best talent for the world's largest technology companies. And then you'll see the bottom one where again, she's using the check mark emoji instead of a line or a dash and it catches your eye in a little bit different way. And it looks like, yep, I do this, I accomplish this, I do this. So that's another clever way to do it stylistically. So as job seekers, what I want you first and foremost to think about is what we see in my client Alexis's profile. Recruiter, relationship builder, sales manager, let's chat. The let's chat was something she had there already um, because she is in recruiting, but I love it because it's such an open, like I'm open to connection, I'm open to engaging. And this is a very common trend right now. Three descriptors and or job titles that fit your experience. And ideally one is going to be the job title of the job you want. Um, but you can see where relationship builder bridges recruiter and sales manager. She has limited recruiting experience. She had come out of sales management, moved into recruiting, COVID happened, looking for another job. But relationship builder is who she is as a brand and it bridges her transitional skills between sales manager and recruiter. 
And you can see um, this is a nice use of the banner where it just sort of looks like open. We're going somewhere. There's sort of a positive vibe to it. Um, and again, when you're scrolling through a bunch of different people who come up in your search, it makes hers catch your eye differently. Um, the other one you'll see on the right is Caroline's. It's the same idea. She's just using the straight line key instead of the slash. Strategy and insights, customer experience, lifelong learning. Uh, and then you'll see she's got the open to job opportunities. This makes it easier for recruiters to find you when you select that you're open to opportunities. And a number of people will even use the hashtag OTO either in their headline or in their about section summary area. So it's another way to get found. To say that you're open to opportunities is in your account under your job seeking preferences. And you'll see where you can just check. It's just like a little toggle box that you'll check to share that let recruiters know you're open to opportunities. And that's where that will show up like it did on what we saw with Caroline's account. Okay, so your summary. So this is an example of a summary that's really written in a storytelling fashion. Um, it's a little easier to get away with this when you A, are an excellent writer and a great storyteller, and when you're at a company or have a track record with big brands that people sort of um, use to already say, huh, okay, like you kind of are vetted on a certain level, and I think I'm gonna read more. So this works great for this fellow who's a software engineer at Google. And because he's using this very straightforward, this is my job title, he's a little bit more personal and in depth in the summary statement. It tells the story of who he is, how he got there and what he's known for and why he's passionate about what he does as a professional. And you'll see also highlights his specialties, um, his skills, hard and um, these are mostly hard skills in this one in particular because he's in um, technology. This you can make work for yourself too, but you need a good hook in that first bit to get people to want to continue reading. In your about summary, you have 2,600 characters to work with. It's a lot. So you can give this overview of your professional life. What you might want to do is have a slightly more succinct summary at the beginning and then later go into a little bit of the paragraph style. What I do definitely want you to have is a key words area in your summary, even though there's a key skills section in LinkedIn, but just like you have in your resume, that key skills section, I want that in your summary. It helps in the algorithm when recruiters are searching for you. So we wanna have that show up in multiple places. So, and it also, when someone's scanning your summary, they're gonna see what they need to. Try not to have too much jargon. Try to eliminate overused words again. Make every word choice count. And think about readability. So spacing, bullet points, headlines, make it easy for people to review. Again, you're marketing yourself. This is your chance, as I said, to let your personality come through and what is your career arc? This is really, really helpful for those of you who are in transition and changing careers. Highlight your top achievements, what you are known for and you wanna be known for, your interests, your passions, your unique voice, your unique brand. Um, what makes you you? And a little bit beyond work and who you are is okay um, to be shareable, especially if it speaks to um, your goal setting, um, community involvement, passion projects. And again, we wanna put career choices in context by telling this career arc story, what you do now, how you got there and what you want next. So people know what it is you're looking for and who your target audience is. Again, the first 43 characters show up on mobile. Um, you need a great opener there for people to wanna keep reading. So this is a slide I have shared before when we're working on our resumes, career change. This is how I want you to think through kind of like the brainstorming activity of what kind of work history and skills you're trying to present in your summary statement. Again, 
uh, your expertise, your top five fields of knowledge that you enjoy using and are known for, transferable skills, those core professional competencies and soft skills that you can showcase, and then your traits, your personality traits, your work habits and style. Again, who are you? What are you known for? What makes you the unique marketing specialist or recruiter or HR manager, computer programmer, what it, whatever it is, what makes you the special one that you are? Um, and then again, if there's areas you're wanting to move in in the future, how can you make note of that? Okay, this is also something I've shared before, a format for your personal mission statement that can think, help you think through that headline or the initial part of your about section in an opening summary. So value, audience, expected outcome, what you're best at, who you serve, and how you do it uniquely. Present tense and forward focus is what I always say when we're thinking about trying to do this one. Okay, I wanna show you this, um, this woman. Um, this is a connection with my um, friend and client, Caroline, and I love hers, okay? This is an awesome uh, banner. You see her in action. It's powerful. Um, she's almost created some brand colors for herself, if you will. She's got the blue backdrop, the purpley blue in the banner. She wore a blue shirt for her headshot. It looks really sharp all together. Um, it's impressive. You can see that this is a larger audience. Um, you see her like a little body language and engagement. And then she uses, her last name is Jewel. So, and I love this, instead of using the slash or the vertical line, she uses this sort of diamond shaped emoji. So again, it kind of creates this like in your mind, this subtle branding um, and learning solutions, leadership and innovation, learning work connector, product management, employability speaker. This woman is employed. She's been employed at the same company for years, but do you see how she's showcasing who she is versus who she works for. And that's ideally where I'd love you all to be once you land your next job as well. Um, and then what I also like about this profile is her about section. Dynamic and energetic executive with 30 years in the education and learning solution space and the ability to capture ideas and convert them into engaging products and programs. An intuitive leader, quick to get to the core of problems, drive collaboration and implement change, direct, clear and authentic communicator with collaborative mindset. So what I love about this, she says she's a direct, clear and authentic communicator. And you know what? She sure is, right? She has just um, communicated in this very authentic way, both visually and in wording and directly and clearly in this very succinct, clean format that she uses. So it's a really, really beautiful example. And then this was Daniel's that I showed you before that is a, a totally opposite end of the spectrum where it's this prose storytelling and it can also be very powerful. But again, no matter what, I wanna make sure where you see the little arrow is to a reminder of having those key skills, core professional competencies out like totally specified in your about summary normally towards the end. Okay. So some of the other things to think about when you're showcasing who you are, and this is also true of when we're doing our skills section, I want you to keep current. There'll be a new list in January of LinkedIn's most in-demand soft skills. They do um, the research of what skills are recruiters looking for, what's coming up in the job descriptions, um, in the job boards, and they create this top list of in-demand soft skills. And the top five for this past year, creativity, persuasion, collaboration, adaptability, and emotional intelligence. Well, no kidding. This is why these skills are so important. Look where we have found ourselves with the pandemic and what we've had to do. Talk about adaptability. Talk about creativity. Um, collaborating in different ways. Um, so these five in-demand skills are always in the top ones in the last several years. They're always going to be important. Ways in which you can showcase that you have these as a professional are important, you know, to where you can utilize these words or words that echo the sentiment. The other thing is 
It might seem obvious that people are working remotely right now, but anywhere you can showcase your past track record of managing or working remotely, training or working, you know, conducting trainings remotely, attending trainings, conferences, any part you took place on a team, whether as a member or in leadership, that happened virtually to be able to highlight that skill because it shows you had a track record before this, which means you probably have even greater expertise. And we know that this is gonna to continue to be a part of our work world for an indefinite amount of time. Diversity and inclusion um, is another important one to highlight. Empathy, I cannot tell you how much I am seeing empathy show up on job descriptions. I'm helping a software engineer, I'm helping a recruiter, I'm helping a copywriter, Empathy is showing up in all of these. Empathetic leadership, empathetic communicator, collaboration. Um, so all these pieces are showing up in job descriptions. You want to showcase these and stay current and relevant and keep your eye out for that new list in January of what the next set of skills from LinkedIn's most in-demand skills are. Okay, so here's another uh, <clears throat> example of later on down in your profile where this is where it starts to look more like your resume where you have all the jobs. And this is where I want you to have every important detail that you did put on your resume. You can start by just cutting and pasting from your resume and putting it in here for your job descriptions. You probably have spent a long time trying to get it just right on the resume. If there were some things that were good, but not the most important that you had to cut, you can add them in here. This can go longer. Again, this will help the algorithm when people are searching as recruiters and hiring managers. So, um, but what I want you to remember is what shows up. You only see a few lines initially under each job. So again, don't bury the lead. Your first couple bullet points need to be the most critical. Um, pieces that you want to showcase. And again, we want this to be uh, qualitative and quantitative. So we want people to see numbers, results, uh, accomplishment, not just job descriptions. So the skills section of your LinkedIn profile, you can add up to 50 skills, use them all. Um, Think about what's most important to the current roles you're looking to get hired in. Go through those job descriptions, which I hope you're already doing with a fine tooth comb. Highlight the key competencies, the core skills they're looking for. Ideally, those have been highlighted already that you're making sure they're in your resume, but make sure you're putting them here in the skills section. There's no reason not to use all 50 that you have. And that also allows you to add in a lot of those soft skills of communication skills, uh, emotional intelligence, those kinds of pieces. Look for industry trends, like I was saying, you know, what's important, what's being highlighted, what again makes you stand out, unique skill set combinations, transferable skills, and all of those general professional competencies. Okay, when you are doing your skill section, the top three skills that show up when you first scroll, th scroll through someone's profile, you'll see the top three skills, and then you can go deeper to look at the rest. What is going to default is whatever you have the highest amount of endorsements for. And if you wanna be found for a skill, you've gotta have at least one endorsement for them, which is why they've gotta be there for someone to be able to endorse you. That's why you wanna go ahead and use up all 50. But if you're trying to showcase it and you want to get found in the algorithm by a hiring manager or a recruiter, then you've gotta have at least one endorsement for it. But what will happen, you'll see, for example, this is from one of my clients. You'll see if you look, we've got marketing strategy, content marketing and brand management. That's what she wants to be known for. That's what she's looking for really as the most important pieces for her next step in her career ladder. So we have pinned these on top and I'll tell you how to do that in just a moment. You'll see if you look down under industry knowledge, strategic communications, she had nine endorsements and event planning, she had eight. That's what used to show up as her top three skills. But event planning is not as important to what she does 
it's not happening in the same way right now virtually. It's not as important for where she wants to go. So we have gone in and selected the one she wants to profile. So now what's on her task list before we meet next week is she's got to get some endorsements for this content marketing and brand management. And we'll talk about doing that too. But you need to actively seek endorsements for your top skills. So when you want to pin these top three skills, um, you're just going to go into edit your skills and you'll see where it tells you, you can reorder your skills within a category or choose up to three skills. And you're just going to literally click on the little pin button and, um, and then click on the one that you want. It'll highlight and then it'll end up popping up in the top three once you save your changes. There's also a new feature on LinkedIn called a skills assessment that you can take. You'll see this when you go into your skills section, when you're in your own profile view. And um, it'll say, give you the option to take a skills assessment. And if you get over 70% of the answers correct, you will earn a badge. So right now, this is definitely easier to do with hard skills, you know, things like Excel, Microsoft Office, programming software and languages. But if you are transitioning or you don't yet have a lot of endorsements for a particular skill, using this badge could be a way to, um, again, get found in the algorithm and showcase a skill even though you don't yet have all the endorsements for it. So don't overlook that as an opportunity. It's a newer feature. Not everyone's using it, but I think it's a worthwhile option. And while, especially while you're in the job search, where again, you can keep your skills fresh by doing some of these assessments as well. Okay, endorsements, getting those endorsements. Um, one of the best ways to get endorsements is to give endorsements. So again, you get what you give, especially in networking, you know, choose to help others, be supportive. Um, the more people you endorse, the more that will come back to you. For you to do that, to endorse others, they'll periodically pop up on your feed where they'll ask you, what is this person's top skill? If you're looking at one of their posts or things of that nature, but you can also go into your profile, look, look at my network, go into your connections and then go to their skills section. And then there's just a little plus sign. So all you need to do is just check that plus sign it's so super easy. This is one of those activities that you could do, you know, if you spend a few minutes a day on LinkedIn and you endorse three people that you know, past colleagues, people you've worked with in volunteer capacities, vendors, clients, and go through and endorse them, you will really start to beef up your own. When you need endorsements, I want you to reach out to your network. Obviously, the closer you are to someone, the easier it is to ask. But I want you to reach out and say, hey, I'm really, you know, I'm currently in the job market. I'm wanting to um, clean up and improve my LinkedIn profile. And I'm actively trying to showcase X, Y, and Z skills. Having worked together in, in these capacities, I thought you'd be a great person. Would you mind taking a minute to endorse me? They'll do it. So proactively ask for what you need in a kind way. What can I endorse you for? What can I do for you? Same thing with recommendations. And we'll talk about those in a minute. The other section that some people aren't as aware of on their LinkedIn profile that I wanna share with you, it's just under that about summary statement is the featured section. This is a great way to showcase your work that you've done. You can link to multimedia. You can link to, you see, I've got, I've got blog posts linked here. Um, the star method that we talked about last time for interviewing skills. If you need a refresher, you can go there and read the blog post. Um, but you'll see I've linked to some of my blog posts. You could link to a video. You could link to a portfolio. You could upload photos of work. Some of the women that I work for, <clears throat> work with as a coach, um, we had a bunch of people who are in marketing. They're showing, you know, the pieces they've created, showcasing their work. So this is a great way to share your knowledge. If you've published a LinkedIn article, if you've published something on Medium, if you've been quoted or published in an industry article, link to it. Gives them, again, 
deeper, richer, more information about you. <clears throat> Don't underestimate this to really, again, create your brand, tell the story that you want to tell. Okay, so here's an example of a profile without a photo. <clears throat> and it looks really womp womp, right? And this woman is such a lovely woman, very engaging, very endearing, very personable. That sure doesn't feel like this. <clears throat> and when I would come onto her as a recruiter, 23 connections, she doesn't seem very active. Generally speaking, people are looking for people who proactively manage their careers. So you want to really showcase yourself. That means you want 500 or more connections. I know that seems a little bit annoying, but it is part of the algorithm to where you're going to really show up when people are searching. So you've got to build up your connections to 500. Um, do not eliminate personal connections on LinkedIn. Some people used to think like, oh, this is my professional world. Facebook, Instagram is my social world. But especially when you're job searching, you're going to find out it's your neighbor who's got the first degree connection to the hiring manager of the company you're trying to get at the, your foot in the door. So don't limit yourself. Again, daily, few times a week, send out several connections requests. You can very easily build up to that 500 number over time. The other thing I want to point out to you is if this shows up in your profile, when you look at your name and then on the right hand side, it says people also viewed. First, I want you to look at these people's profiles and say, why? What does LinkedIn's algorithm think that we are somehow similar? If these people do not seem similar to what you do or what you want to do, then that means there's something wrong with your profile. So it can give you some feedback. <clears throat> Excuse me. But what I want you to do ultimately is to get rid of this. The last thing we want to happen is finally a recruiter, a hiring manager, a former colleague comes to your profile. We don't want them to be like, oh, huh, Lily looks interesting. So does Paul. And next thing you know, they've gone down the rabbit hole and they've forgotten about you and they don't come back to reviewing your profile. So I want you to first check and see what information you get about who it thinks you are in terms of the algorithm. And then I want you to get rid of it. So you're gonna go back into your account um, and then you're gonna go into privacy and you go into the sections that you'll see viewers of this profile also viewed and you're gonna change it. You said, no, you don't want them to be able to see that. So get rid of that. Okay, so again, your this is like your chance for your brand credibility, personal branding that is talked about so much nowadays. And so what, again, I want you to think about is like, this is the same thing that I talked about doing the brainstorming for your resume, for career transition. What are your most important professional successes? What are the awards and accolades you've received? And if they're not showcased in your LinkedIn profile, make sure that they are. And then I want you to also um, pull together a profile to where you have proof of accomplishment and when possible, put those in that featured items section. What I also want you to start doing is after you get hired in the next couple of months, because I know that you are, after that you get hired, I want you to make this something that you do every time in December. Um, I know it's a busy time of year socially. It tends to be a little quieter time of year professionally. I want you to make sure you start to do an annual, at a minimum, update of your resume and LinkedIn and a listing of these accomplishments, actual numbers. What was the revenue increase? What was the client retention change? It's so hard to remember this when you have to look for a job and you're trying to go back through all your paperwork and your files. LinkedIn gives you such an easy place to capture, store, and quickly update it so that even if you don't update your resume, your LinkedIn is current. And when the time comes to update your resume, it'll be that much easier. So make this a regular item that you take care of at a minimum annually. Okay, finally, I want, well, finally, I have a couple more slides, but getting toward the end, I promise. I want you again in thinking about your brand identity and why is this important? It's such an important part of why staying active on LinkedIn matters even after you get hired. It's who are you at your core? 
again, as I've been saying, what are you known for? What do you want to be known for? What do people say about you? What makes you unique? The reason why this is important is that people are unhappy in jobs, not normally because of the type of work they're doing. More often than not, it's because of the environment. Cultural fit is critical. So um, the more clear you can be about who you are and the more clear that is to others, the more likely you're gonna find the right place and it impacts your engagement and satisfaction at work. It also makes decision-making easier for you when opportunities present themselves. When you're clear on who you are, when you're clear on your core values, then you can decide, is this the opportunity to jump at? And it also makes you more intentional, which means you're more um, attuned to opportunities that come your way. It's like, I remember when my niece Josie was born and she was named Josie. The only other Josie I knew was from when I was a little girl with Josie and the Pussycats uh, from the cartoon. Then all of a sudden it was like everywhere I turned, there was a Josie, okay? So this is what happens when we get in attuned to something. So the clearer you are about who you are, what you want and your values, the more you're gonna be aware of opportunities that are out there for you, just like all the Josies. Um, it also makes it easier for other people to know who you are and what you're looking for and how they can find you. Even for myself, um, I recently got an amazing opportunity this year since the pandemic that has added a whole nother revenue stream for me um, doing training for another company. And I love it. It's been the best thing. They found me on LinkedIn through a search. And I try because of the profession I'm in to, it's pretty rare if I don't accept a LinkedIn request or, or engage with someone just to do a little bit of networking. And I thought, what the heck, I'll talk to this woman. And it's been an awesome fit and an incredible addition for me. So let's I say, you really just cannot underestimate the, the power that's out there with LinkedIn. So what I want you to do is to take some action right away, right after this workshop today, tomorrow, this weekend. Do the easy things, update, check your photo, update that headline, the summary, even if it's not perfect, imperfect action is still important. Do something, right? Freshen it up, try something different. My parents used to own a store and this was one of the other things I learned. You could have had the same merchandise sitting in the window for two months and all of a sudden you just kind of switch it around. Nothing's actually different. You just place it a little bit differently. All of a sudden people notice something and they bought. This is the same thing. Try something a little bit different to freshen up your about summary. I want you especially to do the skills section. It's so quick and easy. You're clicking, you're putting in keywords for a search, clean that up right away. And then I also want you to make sure you've got three really good recommendations. If you don't, I want you to ask for them. And Think um, kind of like a 360 degree review kind of an idea. Think of a peer, think of your manager. If you have been in leadership, think of someone you managed, um, a client or a vendor. So that someone who reads your top couple recommendations gets a whole picture of you as a professional, not just from someone who's managed you, not just from someone you've managed. And again, as I mentioned, make sure you're working towards getting to 500 or more connections. I know I've shared this slide before because this is my mantra, just baby steps get you going in the right direction. Sometimes it can get overwhelming when you're looking for work. It can get kind of exhausting. It can be a bit of an emotional roller coaster. Keep taking small steps to stay active, engaged, and proactive. And that's the other thing on LinkedIn, like, share, comment create some of your own content, the more active you are, then the more you're going to stay up in the algorithm for LinkedIn when people are searching for you. So baby steps, small wins are wins, just get moving. And if you need to build your connection, find me. I put how I'm listed on LinkedIn. Happy to uh, you know, engage and connect with you and um, stay connected after being connected here today and in the other workshops. I think we still have um, a good 10 minutes or so for questions. Yes, and I think we've got a few here in the chat. 
Um, I actually have a question of my own as well. Okay. Um, what do you do when you get um, requests from LinkedIn connection requests from people that you don't actually know who you may have, you know, different and there's no note or anything. Um, you may have like common connections, but you've never actually worked with this person or, um, you know, uh, really interacted with them in any context. So I think if you have common connections, especially if it's like, you know, several or more, I would, I personally would accept it. You know, they're somewhat vetted, you know, that, you know, their first degree connection with your first degree, second degree with your first degree, they're somewhat vetted. I think there's really no harm. The worst thing that can possibly happen is you get a lot of spammy type emails. And so what I really to the point that I've gotten is if it's overly spammy, super generic, no um, effort, or it's obviously a bot type email where it's like, as soon as I did it, boom, I got the email or they didn't, you know, then I don't feel obligated to respond to all of those email messages. And I kind of wait and see, you know, see what the engagement and how I start to get to know them at an arm's length, if you will. What I would say is like, you don't want a bunch of junk endorsements though, right? So if like you've really never worked with people and randoms are endorsing you, um, I'd be like a little bit mindful of that. You can actually sort of unaccept an endorsement or a recommendation. And I wouldn't go around endorsing people that like you really can't legitimately endorse them for. Um, but otherwise I would stay fairly flexible and being open, especially when you're job searching you know, a, a wide net can help you. Absolutely, absolutely. I will say to everybody else here that um, in all, Christine and all of her workshops this fall has been plugging LinkedIn and giving us tips the whole way through. Um, and it's something that I have personally found really useful, even though I'm not looking for a job right now, just to make sure that my LinkedIn is updated that it's current, that if my job responsibilities or my accomplishments change, that I'm updating it. And I have been able to also reach out to other um, coworkers or past coworkers or, um, you know, even family members that um, I didn't think about adding my cousins on LinkedIn. So one day I went through and I added all of them and I'm not at 500 yet, but I'm working on it. It's, <laughs> <really great. laughs> it's, um, it's been really interesting just to really engage in this social network. And um, I really encourage you all to do that as well, to, to access it more regularly. It becomes more and more useful. Um, we do have a couple other questions here in the chat. Uh, Kathy Lawrence says, I have trouble copying my link to my LinkedIn profile to my resume. Is there a trick to that? Yeah. So when you're um, in LinkedIn and you go to your profile, you're going to copy it from the bar, like in Safari or Google Chrome or whatever your um, search engine is, and you're going to copy it there. And, and then you should be able to paste it. And then the trick is once it's in your Word document, highlight it and hit control K, that's going to take you to the hyperlink setting. And I want you to remove the link because remember, if you're using that for the ATS, um, an automated online application, it doesn't like hyperlinks. So that's just a fast, quick way to kill the link. Good to know. If and you then, still just can't, sorry, if you still just cannot for whatever reason make it work, email me or message me on LinkedIn and I'll copy and paste it and send it to you and then see if that works easier. Awesome. Um, and then question from Jason Hopper, do you have to have LinkedIn premium to use the skills assessment? No. So that is different than like the LinkedIn learning um, <clears throat> to where there are these short online assessments. I think they're usually on average like 15 or so questions. Um, so you don't need that. But I can't, I'm so glad you asked this, Jason, because I cannot believe I was going to forget this. But the beautiful thing that I discovered in one of our first workshops is that Everyone who is a Dallas Public Library cardholder has access to LinkedIn Learning. So you don't need to pay for the premium account in order to access LinkedIn Learning, which is a great way to up your skills and showcase them because then they'll also show up on your profile under certifications. 
yeah, I was, I'm going to show everybody okay, how to access that. Um, when we're when we're done with the questions, so are there any other questions here before before we move on? All right, I'm gonna share my screen here. All right, so first I wanted to just make everybody aware that we have a couple more December programs before we break for the holidays. Next week, we're going to be focusing on, we're gonna be um, hosting our adult learning team from the library, and they're gonna be talking specifically about GED resources. So mm. if you know anyone who is looking to get their GED, um, it'd be, it will be a really useful um, session. We have um, free classes and also a scholarship to take the test for free here at the library. Um, I, I know things are changed a little bit since things aren't in person, um, right now, but we do have online classes, so lots of good resources. And then we'll have Jewish Family Services back on the 17th, talking about in establishing employer needs. We had this session back several months ago, and it was really, really useful, really interesting. Um, so we, this is on our Job Seeker page, and I will send this out to everybody after the session as well. Um, we have a lot of helpful resources here, current job leads. Um, an archive of all of the recorded events that we have and a place to sign up for our newsletter, which goes out every Monday um, with um, more helpful links and um, resources, uh, links to programs, things like that. I wanted to showcase the library's LinkedIn page, um, which I uh, am able to, which I have the privilege of creating some content for, and we love connecting with everybody. So um, I will also include a link to this here. Um, go ahead and follow us. We try and make stuff here useful for job seekers, as well as people just interested in the library and what resources there are in general. And then of course, we do have access to LinkedIn Learning on our databases page. You'll click databases on the um, homepage for the library. Um, and it is called lynda.com, which is the old name, um, but it, it still will um, transfer over to your LinkedIn account and show up as a, um, like show up as badges, Christine, or um, completed courses or something like that. It'll show up on your LinkedIn profile. Yes, okay. it's kind of usually down in the certifications area, right. down the education and certifications. Okay. So yeah, once you, and this is completely free, you just have to sign in with your library account. Um, and I can include information about how to sign up for a library card as well, if you live in the city of Dallas. So um, yeah, we would love to, to be able to give everybody that resource. And uh, I'm not sure how we got to this point, but this is the last Ask a Career Coach session of the year. I do want to, um, Thank Christine so much for all of the insight that she's given us these past several months. It's been super helpful. Um, we love been, being able to, to share it with all of you. Um, keep an eye out for some changes in programming next year from the um, Job Seeker Center here at the library. We're going to, to start a um, professional development series talking about once you have that job, how do you succeed? How do you build your connections, build your career, build your brand. Um, so keep an eye out for that. We'll definitely be sending information out on that in the newsletter. Um, so keep an eye. Um, definitely, yeah, I showed you our LinkedIn page, follow us on LinkedIn. Um, and I think that's it for today. Any other questions or any other comments or thoughts? <laughs> Kathy, I've loved all the workshops, but she's not even looking for a job. I echo that as well. <laughs> super useful, super insightful, even just thinking about um, the, the branding aspect of it of like, what, what, who am I apart from this job? What are my goals and aspirations and how do I manifest that through my career? So um, thanks again, everybody for coming out today. We really appreciate you. And we'll see you, um, hopefully see you next week. And if we don't, have a happy holidays. Bye, everybody. <laughs>